Okay, I think uh, the main issue that both uh, Al Plantinga brought up and William Craig brought up is that to deduce atheism from science, you need to add the supplementary premises of methodological naturalism or uh, metaphysical naturalism. And I don't think that's true, because my original argument I gave, all the deductions I gave were deductions from scientific theses. And there were no uh, metaphysical or naturalistic assumptions uh, in the argument um, that were not in Einstein's theory itself. And I think that pertains also to what Al Plantinga is saying. He wants to say that um, you need methodological naturalism in order to uh, uh, have a scientific theory such as evolutionary psychology that is inconsistent with uh, Christian belief. But um, I, I don't think that's true because I think uh, the abandonment of, of God and Christian belief from science actually grew out of science itself because science um, began roughly around the time of Newton's uh, book on natural philosophy and Newton included God within his science and that wasn't a methodological supernaturalism or a metaphysical supernaturalism that was actually an axiom within his scientific theory. Uh, Newton claimed that, that, that space and time were God's sensorium. And uh, Copernicus claimed that uh, he defined gravity non-quantitatively, non but he defined it as, what, uh, as the means by which God brings about the uh, uh, falling of bodies to the earth. Uh, but as the uh, time went on, as the 19th century occurred, uh, using the method of science, not methodological naturalism, but just using science, the predictions of science and the evidence gathered from that, it was found that there's no evidence that space and time are God's sensorium. So that was dropped from Newton's philosophy. And all references to our religion were dropped from science because there was no uh, evidence for that. No, no religion could make a prediction that could result in a, in a confirmed observational evidence. And uh, I think with regard to uh, Darwin's argument, um, I would say that uh, I didn't hear the talk from uh, last night apparently, um, but I would say the argument that uh, naturalism and evolution um, have a, are, is highly improbable. Well, first of all, I'd say that, that naturalism is itself entailed by Darwinian evolution, since it's actually a part of evolutionary theory. And so you can't conjoin evolution with naturalism and treat it as a largely in independent conjunct. And uh, if you try and conjoin evolution with theism, you get a self-contradictory proposition because evolution includes naturalism within itself. Because evolution describes a natural causal process that brings about the evolution of organisms. And it brings about uh, warranted belief in humans because uh, the purpose of life, according to Darwin, is to survive and reproduce, and you can only can survive if you can make your way about the world. You can only can make your way about the world if you have true and warranted beliefs about what the world is and where you can find food and, and things like that. And so it's uh, natural evolution itself that explains why you have warranted beliefs. And as for evolutionary psychology, that is not an established science. That's still regarded as, as a speculative science that is not fully academically respectable. Um, one reason is that its conclusions all just happen to uh, support the uh, political right-wing beliefs. And for a science to be uh, true, serious science, it's uh, 
conclusions have to impress themselves upon anybody, regardless of their political beliefs. But I think a more uh, serious science today is genetic psychology, uh, which uh, uh, establishes the uh, genetic inheritance of certain personality traits, in particular such as religion and atheism. They've done studies published in September issue of Science 1997 showing that uh, atheism, atheism, atheistic temperament, and religious temperament are genetically inherited traits. And they showed that by taking identical twins, bringing some up with atheistic parents and some with uh, religious parents. And they found out that the twins brought up with atheistic parents, as adults, the twins were both, uh, they brought the twins up with uh, atheistic parents, one twin with atheistic parents, one twin with religious parents, but both of the twins ended up as adults being atheists. Okay, we need to wrap it up. Okay, uh, one more sentence. <laughs> um, and then they took uh, uh, another set of twins and they brought them up with atheistic parents and again with religious parents and both these twins when they grew up to be adults had a religious temperament. They believed in God. So that would uh, tend to show that whether you're an atheist or a theist is a matter of the genes that you inherit from your parents.